Thank you very much. My name is Vanessa Rulik, as I was introduced, and I'm a heritage researcher at Thread Architect. We're based in Somerset. Um, as a brief introduction, I studied architecture, and after a few years working in architecture in South Africa and Namibia, I completed an MPhil in conservation of the built environment so that I could finally pursue my passion and my interest in heritage and conservation. The repair and adaptation of existing buildings and the dusty scent of darkened archives filled with fragile papers um, always filled me with so much joy. Um, I'm a full member of the IHBC as a conservation professional, and so I sometimes struggle to define my actual job at Thread. I do a lot of things that architects do, um, but I'm happiest doing my heritage work, research, historical analyses, understanding the significance of places, and recording what I find. So I hope you'll find this interesting. Um, as I tonight talk about Boston Lodge work and its heritage and interpretation within the slate landscape of Northwest Wales World Heritage Site. Um, Boston Lodge Works is located on the edge of Snowdonia, Snowdonia National Park at the Merineth end of Maddox Embankment, which is now known as the Cobb. It's less than a mile from the Port Maddox terminus of the Vistinog Railway in North Wales. The Vistinog Railway is in all probability the oldest independent statutory railway company in the world. And it is of international significance as it pioneered the use of steam power on a narrow gauge railway and clearly demonstrated the practicability of building narrow gauge railways in terrain where the building of a standard gauge railway would be impractical or uneconomic. This led to the building of numerous narrow gauge railways throughout the world. It also enabled the transport of local Welsh slate to the rest of the world, and as such, forms an integral part of the story of the development of Welsh, the Welsh slate industry. Boston Lodge developed on one of the quarry sites, which supplied the stone for the construction of the cob, later evolving as the Pistinog Railway manufactured and repaired its earlier slate wagons, and subsequently steam locomotives. This manufacture and repair continues to this day. Boston Lodge Works is probably the oldest railway workshop in the world that is still in use for its original purpose. The slate which was transported by the Pistinog Railway in its early years is the very slate which is celebrated by the UNESCO World Heritage Site listing of the slate landscape of Northwest Wales. The UNESCO World Heritage Committee defines World Heritage Sites as places of outstanding universal value to the whole of humanity. This means that their cultural and or natural significance is so exceptional as to transcend national boundaries and to be of common importance for present and future generations of all humanity. There is no higher recognition of heritage value. Gwyneth Council, and a large team of partners and stakeholders from across the region worked for well over 10 years to prepare for the Slate Landscape UNESCO nomination. I've had no part in that whatsoever, but my understanding of its significance has been richly informed by the work done by the Slate Landscape of Northwest Wales Steering Group and so many organizations and individuals who had the vision to promote this region's international significance. These included the Fistiniog Railway and Dr. David Gwynne, the trustee of the Fistiniog and Welsh Highland Railways Trust, who was also on the project coordination team for the La Slate Landscapes nomination. This knowledge was invaluable for us. When Thread was appointed to work on Boston Lodge work in 2020, the Slate Landscape had been officially nominated, but its formal inscription had not yet been decided. We knew that regardless of UNESCO's decision, its nomination alone attested to this landscape's significance 
and therefore our work had to be guided and richly informed by this. The slate landscape was formally given UNESCO World Heritage status in July 2021. The slate landscape was formed by the quarrying, processing and transportation of slate to produce roofing and architectural materials for markets across the world from the late 18th to the 20th century. By the late 19th century, the area produced a third of the world's slate. The management plan compiled by the Slate Landscape Clearing Group notes that this cultural landscape was shaped not only by the quarries, but also by the need to tip substantial quantities of waste rock, to process and transport slate, to manage water as both a threat and an asset, to house workers and their families, and to provide for their material, moral, and intellectual well being. The justification for the Slate Landscape's nomination is noted as being the following. The Slate Landscape of Northwest Wales exhibits an important interchange of human values, particularly in the period from 1780 to 1940, on developments in architecture and technology. It is an outstanding example of a type of landscape which illustrates in a dramatic way the combined works of nature and of man through the large scale exploitation of natural resources. It is an outstanding example of the industrial transformation of the traditional human settlements and marginal agrarian land use patterns. It also exemplifies how remarkably homogenous, how a remarkably homogenous minority culture adapted to modernity in the industrial area, but also retained many of its traditional attributes. The fifth component of the World Heritage Site is named Fistinyog, its slate mines and quarries, city of slate and railway to Port Maddox. The now Fistinyog is known as the city of slate, being the center of the area's slate quarries and the largest slate town in Northwest Wales, once home to over 12,000 people at its peak in the late 19th century. From the early 19th century, the Duard River provided the best route for slate to be transported from the slope of the quarry down to the sea at Port Maddox, 15 kilometers away. Slate Keys still form part of the river landscape to tell the story. From 1836 to 1946, the Fistinyog Railway transported slate from the quarries around Lanao Fistinyog to the harbor of Port Maddox. The early horse and gravity railway provided a more efficient transport route, later evolving with steam power. The Fistinyog Railway is a reflection of technology transfer to the region, demonstrated by the local use of narrow gauge iron edge rail, the use of Stevenson technology of wrought iron rails and stone block, and the use of locomotives and carriages designed and built in England. The Vistinyog Railway demonstrates the transfer of technology within the region through the general evolution of the narrow gauge railway to carry and transport slate. It is also an example of knowledge or technology transfer from the region as reflected in the development of the world-renowned Darjeeling Railway. Within this context, Boston Lodge Works was one of several foundries and manufactories which contributed significantly to the industrial and technical capacity of the Gwynedd region in the 19th and early 20th century. Its design and organization reflect the evolution of the Vestinyog Railway from an 1830s horse and gravity mineral railway to a fully fledged but narrow gauge public Boston Lodge forms an integral part of the story which highlights the significance of the historic slate landscape of Northwest Wales. The aims of our project have therefore been to ensure the importance of the railway's heritage and that of the slate industry 
that it served is communicated to the over 250,000 visitors which travel on it every year, who are increasingly unaware of this heritage. To conserve, restore, and rebuild a number of buildings of historic significance at Boston Lodge, some of which are derelict, and to make these buildings more efficient as a working site and to improve the existing conditions for staff, apprentices, trainees, and volunteers who practice heritage skills there in order to service the railway. And also to open up supervised public access to Boston Lodge work and its heritage for the first time through an activity program which will bring significant numbers of non-traditional railway users for managed tours, talk, and skills training where they can learn about the significant heritage at Boston Lodge. Additionally, the project will provide interpretation at key points along the railway. And lastly, the project is aiming to address a skills shortage in the industrial heritage sector by offering traineeships, work placements, practical workshops, and new volunteering opportunities. Thread was appointed based on a competitive tender by the Festinog and Welsh Highland Railways to work with them to develop a philosophical and practical approach to the conservation of the existing structures at Boston Lodge and to enhance visitors' understanding of the heritage significance of the site within its wider context, whilst improving services across the site and for the continued and sustainable use of the, of the site into the future. We form part of a fantastic team of professionals, including integral design engineers, E3 consulting engineers, C2 safety, Greenwood Project, the Creative Core, Minerva Heritage, and Anna Callum Associates. Throughout the project, we've worked closely with the railway client team, their volunteers, and an exceptional project manager. I think they all needed mentioning here because this has been such a collaborative team effort. Even within Thread, I'm just one of the cogs that has kept this project moving. My role during the development phase of the National Heritage Fund project was to research and collate the historical development of Boston Lodge to help understand its heritage significance, that of individual buildings and the site as a whole. This work was based on the Fistinog Railway's extensive archive material, including their many digitally scanned historic photographs and the informative work of others who've compiled records of the railway and Boston Lodge in particular. For example, John Alexander, who gave me hours of his time on the phone to talk through the history of the site while I worked from my kitchen table during lockdown. I also found the individual building assessments completed by archaeologist Bob Zeepert, invaluable for the level of detail they provided on each building. We updated the railway's already comprehensive conservation management plan from 2015 to bring it in line with current NLHF requirements. Part of this included updating the document to include more on the site's relationship to its wider heritage context. And here we refer to David Gwynne's work for the UNESCO bid, which helped frame Boston Lodge's contribution to the slate landscape. We visually collated the available heritage information into a drawing format that summarized the entire site development so that this could be more legible to the clients and their stakeholders. This was an element of work which had not been completed by others before. The site comprises 11 listed structures shown in green on the slide here, all centered around the oldest part of the site and its railroad. As part of the work to understand the historical development of the site and the significance of its component parts, we also investigated the historical uses and processes which form a key part of Boston Lodge's history. This could be seen in the items which are stored across the site, ranging from small rivets and bolts through to the larger machinery located on the site at Boston Lodge work or relocated to the railway storage elsewhere. 
the industrial archaeology of Boston Lodge work, lost, hidden, fixed, or moving, remains a key defining feature of the site's significance as a working railway and workshop. This work informed our design approach and the importance of the buildings themselves as forming part of the interpretation of Boston Lodge. In the process of analyzing the site's historic development, uses and processes, we were able to understand that there are six key historic eras at Boston Lodge. The construction and repairs of the Cobb, 1808 to 1814, was the first one. The quarry on which Boston Lodge was built was opened in 1807 in order to build the embankment across Glaston Estuary. The embankment, the Cobb, which you can see leading off at the left end of the screen, was completed in September 1811, but was breached in February of the following year. The quarry was possibly closed some time after repairs of the breach were completed in 1814. A railway was retained along the Cobb for the purpose of periodic stone dumping. In 1819, two buildings were on the site, Boston Lodge, which is also known as the Barracks, and a smaller building just beyond the end of the Cobb. The quarry was probably finally closed after the main road on the inland side of the Cobb was built in the mid-1830s. The second phase would be the early horse-drawn railway and the top yard work between 1836 and 1863. The original area was purchased by the Pistiniog Railway Company in 1836. It comprised a yard known as the top yard, which you can see labeled on the screen in the middle here. It was leveled and used for the construction, repair, and storage of wooden wagons. And the two-story building, which I've already mentioned, was Boston Lodge, and that's the dark one in black over there. The site included an earlier yard used in connection with the building of the Cobb. A manufactory was built on the site in 1848. It comprised a smithy, foundry, stationary steam engine house, machine shop, sawmill, and a building that was probably the original carpenter's shop. And these all formed around the top yard. The area now known as the bottom yard was purchased in 1850, and the works were extended over a number of years. A way house was built to the east of the work on the north side of the railway in 1856. And that you can see near the top of the screen in dark green. The next phase of the site's history was the arrival of steam locomotives and passengers between 1863 and 1865. Following the introduction of steam locomotives on the railway in 1863, a stone-built two-road locomotive shed was built to the west of the Wayhouse. That's the long building seen at the top of the screen. A corrugated iron extension was added to its north in around 1878. All the buildings that were extant in 1875 are believed to have been of stone, possibly trimmer dog flags with slated roofs. The next phase was the building of the railway's own locomotives from about 1877 to 1885, and then again from 1971. In 1877, an extension to one of the smithies, a carpenter's shop, and an erecting shop for the construction of a new locomotive and a, an extension to the boiler house were built. All these buildings made use of corrugated iron. And they reflect the development of more machinery as more locomotives were built. Another phase, which is often not mentioned, is when Boston Lodge Works was used as a World War I munitions work or National Shell Factory between 1915 and 
and 1919. Many women were employed in this industrial service and the railway would like to see more involved as they adapt to the 21st century. And finally, the site's revival was its last era from about 1954. The Festinyog Railway had declined as the 20th century progressed and it closed in 1946. Boston Lodge Works itself finally closed in 1947 and lay derelict until the present administration took over the railway in 1954. Since then, a number of earlier buildings have been altered or demolished and further buildings have been erected. Some of those lost buildings tell an important part of the site story. Boston Lodge is so important for social and community value as a place where traditional skills are fostered, as a provider of training and education for young people and old, and a place where the sights and sounds of the past can come to life. Our studies have shown that it has a great, value, a great deal of evidential value, historical value, and aesthetic value. A lot of its aesthetic value derives from the use of distinctive materials such as the slate and the skill of their construction, the blending of vernacular and standard industrial era industrial forms. A lot of the value is derived by the way the spaces are used their functional use as a workshop space contributes visually to an understanding of the historic significance of Boston Lodge as a, as a working railway site. The communal value of Boston Lodge um, cannot be overemphasized. The historic machinery itself derived has a value in that it gives value to those who have worked on it and those who have visited the workshops and seen the processes which keep it running. Many of the volunteers surveyed as part of the NLHF interpretation project highlighted the significance of volunteers, past and present, for their contribution of their skills and years of their own time to work on the railway, to restore track, electrical systems, carriages, and more. Many of these volunteers started following a paid experience or a kids week. This emphasizes the importance of sharing the site and its assets so that this passion can be carried over to new generations and new volunteers. The communal value of the buildings of Boston Lodge derives from its collective experience and the memory of staff, volunteers, residents and visitors. We developed our design approach based on our understanding of the significance. Our analysis showed that certain historic views should be preserved. The top yard should be cleared of modern temporary structures to be developed as the heritage area of the work. The prominent external views of the barracks from the railway and road should be kept. The historic view of the bottom yard should also be protected. The historic view of the old engine shed and the surrounding buildings should be protected and future buildings, particularly those that will be visible from outside the work, should be designed to harmonize with the historic Boston Lodge scene as far as practical. A key concept of the project was therefore the reinstatement of the area known as the top yard the center of Boston Lodge, so to speak. The top yard is the oldest part of Boston Lodge. It is surrounded by the residences at the bar barracks, the former signals and telegraph stores and telephone exchange, the brass foundry, the amenity block, the blacksmith's workshop, Plasmart, and the main line of the railway. Road access to the work is through the top yard. A wagon shed, carpenters, joiner's shop, and an extension to the blacksmith shop and, and a former sawmill also once existed around the yard. And these are indicated 
in the in the corner here. These lost structures help to define the top yard, to visibly enclose it. Another um, approach that we took to our design was the display and use of surviving historic machinery and artifacts of Boston Lodge. It ties in closely with the results of consultation for the interpretation of the site. 90% of those surveyed would like to see the railway skills in action in the various buildings across the site. The unique and distinguishing quality of the site is that it is a working site where ongoing repairs and fabrication continue in the workshop. While it is not possible to allow visitors into all of these spaces, consideration is to be given to maximizing routes through the sites and views into these spaces so that visitors can appreciate the working nature of Boston Lodge work, past and present. Adapting for resilience to climate change is another important aspect to consider. The railway is committed to reducing energy consumption and minimizing its impact on the environment. And this provides an ongoing opportunity to reduce carbon emissions. The current strategy for the project is to maximize the opportunity for heat pump technology for space heating, to enhance the thermal performance of building fabric where practical, and to provide natural ventilation to maintain comfortable internal conditions in summer, to specify low energy LED lighting and controls, and to minimize external light flow. Careful consideration has been given to how these technologies are installed and implemented to ensure that they do not have a det detrimental impact on the physical fabric or on the historic views or character of buildings and the site as a whole. Reuse of materials on the site is a key design strategy, which has been adopted to reduce the need for new virgin materials. This echoes much of the work of the railway itself, evident in the many shelves of components stored for reuse in the repair of locomotives in the workshop. The reuse of stone sourced from the site ensures that the historic character of the former quarry site is also preserved. Thread's design intention and brief is also to enable the site to be secured and understood as a living, breathing, and atmospheric working space. In addition, new sensitive, pragmatic, and sustainable interventions are required to facilitate the continued unbroken use of the site as in originally intended. As such, full understanding of the railway's storage and access requirements was needed. Our proposals seek to improve on the volume of storage available whilst maximizing the use of existing buildings without harming their significance or the protected views of the site. We also had to consider the placement of two skips, a waste oil tank and stackable pallet storage. The sketch illustrates the vehicle movements across the site, including delivery of long lengths of steel and pallets, daily small deliveries, transit van deliveries, and limited controlled access onto the railway, which runs along the top in the orange arrow. As you can see, it was quite a complicated challenge to, to find a way that works both visitors, workers, volunteers, and vehicles. The importance of the railway's volunteers has come up again and again on this project. A major component of the project was to improve their work conditions and facilities, and also to improve the inclusivity of the facilities to welcome a wider demographic of volunteer. The design intention is to improve the efficiency of the mess room layout by providing ease of access when Staff and volunteers are completing very dirty work, often working with oil and grease, improved access from the main working yard, good views of the site during break, more flexible facilities as the proportion of male and female staff changes, 
and new facilities for all, not just office users. Our proposal relocates the den to its former location in a prominent building on the site and will reinstate the lost gable of the old sawmill on, on this prominent elevation, which can be seen from the railway. Our proposals aim to bring visitors to the top yard to enable the visitor to start their visit at the beginning, at the heart of Boston Lodge's layered history, to enhance their understanding of the site's history and significance. This will complement the proposed interpretation in the old engine shed, which is where tours will end. Will end. The fully accessible toilet facility is proposed in the old oil store at the center of the top yard. Careful consideration of the demolition of a 1970s structure was needed here so as to improve works access and open up views and reinstate a lost window of a very important building, the old brass foundry, which can be seen on the left of the screen. As part of the aim to restore the main historic view of the top yard, we will rebuild the lost wagon repair shed, which was once an open fronted slate wagon repair shed seen in historic photos and archaeological records. We made careful we made careful measurements of old drawings and photos to work out how it could look using modern construction techniques, but using slate to hang on to the traditional material. The barrack, our proposal for the barracks is to provide a safe and accessible route for railway staff to the new offices, which will be housed within cottage number two. This addresses a 1.5 meter level change from the top yard to the railway below and allows users to access the office without having to work, walk directly alongside the railway line, which you can see at the left of that photograph. It also ensures that the office is accessible to those of all abilities without the need for the installation of a lift which in turn minimizes change to the existing historic fabric. It will not impact on the views of this very prominent facade from the railway. In the old engine shed, visitors will approach it on their way back from Boston Lodge, entered from the main west entrance, enjoying the full impact of the experience of opening the doors just as it was experienced when the abandoned site was rediscovered in the 1950s after the railway's decline and brought back to life by its dedicated volunteers. The need for architectural intervention to this building is minimal, restricted to conservation repairs and M&E installations to better illuminate the engines housed within. The majority of the work here will be in the form of inter interpretation displays. The reinstatement of the extension of a shed shown on the right of this building provides the opportunity for the provision of a larger and multifunctional space on site, which will be known as the NLHF Training and Research Centre. Here, the Britomart engine will be displayed in the location of the previously demolished Britomart shed. We aim to connect the visitor through to the blacksmiths and the door to the iron foundry beyond. This will help relate this contemporary interior to the processes and production on the site within. It will also help with the problem of enabling visitors to see what's happening without the health and safety issues of taking them right the way through these very dangerous workshops. The use of an insulated timber frame construction and corrugated iron will reflect the historic building typology of the previous construction, as shown in the photo on the left. We obtained listed building consent for the work in September 2021. With a massive 
grant from the NLHF and funding from the railway and the Fistin York Railway Society, the railway's ambitions to share its heritage and contribution to the slate landscape are now possible. After a competitive tender, we now have a contractor on site, OBR Construction. And it's very exciting to see where this will lead us in the coming months. Watch this space. Thank you very much.